Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be talking about the spell Cloud of Daggers. Now, like Sam, I don't think Sam knows this about me, but some <laughs> uh, fans of the Authors and Dragons podcast might know this about me. I am, I'm not a huge anime nerd. However, there's one show that I'm particularly fond of, Revolutionary Girl Utsuna. And this spell reminds me a lot of the, uh, what is the, the million swords of humanity's hatred that comes down against the Rose Bride at the end of the series. And uh, Spoiler alert, Bob. Well, this spell is, is not that. It's uh, <laughs> not nearly as cool. <laughs> incredible setup for a fine spell anyways i, I, I you know that giant, that show. amazing fantastical conclusion to that show that i love about all those giant magical swords big in circles yeah this ain't that no it's, it's not that at all <laughs> even upcast wait just really set up those expectations so beautifully yeah i gotta i, I gotta pitch the show when i can it's uh sure it was a, sure. a highlight of the 90s are you familiar with the show god no i didn't uh. The only Yu Gi Oh or the only anime I've seen is Yu Gi Oh when I was like twelve. So all right, yeah, I haven't seen many more than this, but uh, this was this is a turning point in my nerddom. Incredible! I'm glad you got to have that turning point. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Cloud of <laughs> Daggers. Yeah, Cloud of Daggers. Uh, this is a fine spell. This is pretty cool. This is a spell you can build around. This is a spell that is nifty in the lower tiers of play. It's nifty whenever you're at a relatively fresh table. Uh, it's fine. I like it. It serves a nice purpose. Are we done? No, I mean, there's, <laughs> I will be honest. There's only so much to say about a 44 area circle. Uh, but for the most part, like that's what this is. This is a no save, something taking at least 44 damage. If you put it in someone's space and they start their space, that's for their, their turn there. How big is the area? Damage. Uh, it is a glorious tiny five foot side cube. Oh, all right, not not a, not a lot to work with there. Yeah. Um, so it it's not gargantuan or by any stretch, but like if you think about like five by five area, realistically is a gigantic cube, right? Like think about the width of a person and the height of a person and a box. That's big. Um, but yeah, like, but it's still like you know for for gaming purposes. Yeah. You you're targeting one creature. Yes, this is a space. Yeah. Um. What's neat about it, right, is so the creatures take the damage and it's just 44 slashing. So this isn't force or anything. So this they're gonna be people that are resistant to this kind of stuff. That's not the end of the world. Um, what's what's interesting is they take the damage the first time on a turn that they enter the space, um, which is neat. And the reason that's neat is because there's some weird rules interactions with how the spell functions. Um, or if they start their turn in it, those are the two instances that something takes damage. So if you cast this, uh, I believe based off of me delving for 10 minutes into old D, D forum threads and so, uh, like searching through sage advice to find their input um which is the designers talking about their errata and stuff um whenever you cast cloud daggers on a daggers on a creature it doesn't take any damage uh if the creatures in that space they take the first time they'll take damage is the start of their turn if they don't move or anything before that right which means if you want to do more damage with the spell you have to get them to move um before the start of their turn into the space so hypothetically what this looks like is you casting cloud of daggers five feet to the left of a creature your fighter shoves them into it for 44 damage and then they take 44 damage at the start of their turn that's the kind of setup that i think makes the spell a little bit more novel a little bit more interesting um in actual use cases of that very few and far between just takes your concentration so you being able to gust of wind is like the best you got is using the gust cantrip to try and knock them into it um but there can be some builds. You can have some cool party cooperative moments where you're just like, you just grab somebody by the throat and you just wiggle them in and out of a five foot cube of daggers until their head falls off. That can be nifty. Uh, what about upcasting? Does that increase the, uh, ra the area or the just the damage? It'd be really cool if it increased the area. That would make it much better. But yeah. it does give you extra damage. Uh, 2d4 extra damage for each spell slot is actually a pretty good rate. So going from 44 to 64 is a third level spell. I mean, obviously this is no fireball, but like that's not the end of the world. Um, it's the kind of thing where if you are if you have the ability to do 12 to damage to something, that's kind of novel and nifty. And it's going to be a little bit, um, it's going to be, I think, slightly more damage than 8d6. Yeah, slightly more, I think. I'm trying to do the math in my head and it's never a good idea. Um, but like 
it has its use cases. It's not the end of the world if you can get two products of it to um, make it worth your while. It means if you can keep it up for a full minute and something just sits in it, this does a shitload of damage. This If this ever does 16d4 damage, you're like, got exactly what I wanted out of this spell. This spell's excellent, did its job, great. Realistically, you're going to get 8d4 damage out of this tops because um, you're either going to get hit or you're going to want to cast something else that's concentration or it's going to die or any number of things are going to prevent this from doing more damage. But Well, I mean, even if it dies, you can shove somebody else in there. I mean, Yeah, conceivably. Um, I really wish you could move it. You can't move it. Once it's in yeah. place, it's just there forever. Um, so that kind of sucks. But the rest of the spell, it's novel. It's, it's nothing you're going to be super excited about ever to use. The fact that there's no saves involved makes it very reliable, and I'm a big fan of reliable spells, you know. Um, I probably overrate this a little bit, but this is a spell that you can build around it, you can use it, but at the end of the day, it's 44 damage in a five-foot area. Um, and if you can weaponize that, great. And if you can't, it's just going to be a probably worse version of the magic missile. And that's the reality of it. All right. Yeah. I, I don't have anything else to say about it. What, uh, what, what, what's Sam's score do you give this? Uh, I think this is, uh, three out of five is probably a little bit generous, but that's what I'll give it. Um, yeah. Those, I'm gonna give it a two. Yeah, that's it's somewhere in between those two, probably. It's probably round two or three, depending on the table. If it, it's a spell where the, if you oh go for it. Just the aesthetic of this, mm-hmm. what what I'm picturing, yeah, especially since I've watched Revolutionary Girl Utena, is uh this is a, kind of a letdown. That's what you have Blade Barrier for. That's the real Cloud of Daggers in your vision, I'm imagining, right? A gigantic wall of spinning actual swords that's a real ass meat grinder. Yeah. That's easy to get higher level spell slots for. You just can't do it at third level, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm just not excited about Cloud of Daggers. It's hard to be excited about something that is just 44 damage. Magic Missile does 44 plus 4. If you're only getting one use out of it, this is strictly worse, but you're probably getting more than one hit off of it, so it's better. That's Hopefully. Better. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, everyone. That was Cloud of Daggers. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.